It is so difficult to build a trading strategy and it can take a very long time too. And that's why most people end up copying other trader strategies and fail. But is there any easy way to build a trading strategy? Well, there's one way and it also turns out to be one of the best ways, which even most advanced beginners can learn. And I've split it up into four steps to simplify it even more. Now you can't really build a strategy without any concepts, right? So before we start building our trading strategy, we want to have a good understanding of what we're actually trading. So in my opinion, you need to know at least five concepts or the amount you have planned to use. By the way, this isn't only for ICT traders, it can also be for other kinds of traders. But if you don't know the amount of concepts that you want to include into your strategy, I would recommend studying some of the concepts that I've talked about in this video right here. Or take your favorite concepts, which you have been studying the most, and include them into your strategy. And me personally, I like to use the inversion probability gap as one of my main concepts. So now that we have planned out which concepts we're going to use for our strategy, how do we put them into use? Well, that leads us to the second step. So when it comes to how many rules the strategy needs to have, we really need to think about it. Because if we only have one to two rules, the confirmation might not be enough and the trade will fail. But if we have nine or ten rules, it might be too much to remember and the trade will also fail. So how many rules do we need? Well, if you look at the inversion for value gap strategy, it is made of five solid rules without any extra added to it. That is probably also going to be a good start for most traders. I would even say closer to four rules to keep it more simple. But if you are an advanced trader, I would say go for around six to seven rules. But it's really up to you and your preferences. But what should these rules be made of? That is where the concepts from the first step come into play. Now imagine that you have five rules and three concepts. And we start off with the first rule where there should be placed a concept which gives us confirmation or an idea where price is going to go, such as a liquidity sweep or a significant PD rate. And when we have gotten that confirmation, we want to have what is called the main concept, which is where we are going to take our trade entry. And we can modify this by adding an extra rule to that second concept. For example, let's say that the main concept is a fair value gap. Then the third rule could be that the fair value gap should be within a discount if we are bullish, as then there is higher chance of price moving higher based on the fair value gap. And the fourth rule could be a specific stop loss placement or an idea of when your trade entry is going to fail. For example, when price have reached two times into the fair value gap that we took a trade entry based on, then we are going to exit or something in that direction. And the fifth rule is where we are going to use our third concept. And that third concept should be a take profit level such as internal range liquidity or just a significant level where reversal is anticipated. And there you have it, your five rules to your trading strategy. But there's one last step and without it, the trading strategy we just made doesn't even matter at all. But before that, I just want to show you an example of a trading strategy. This strategy right here is going to follow the recipe that we just discussed in the first, second and third step. Now, as we just talked about, the first rule should be a confirmation. And that is where we want to see price leader from sell side liquidity or a fair value gap. And in this example, we can see price reached up into a premium fair value gap and then start to move lower from there. Second rule, which is the main concept. We want to see a singular inversion fair value gap. And we can see after we delivered from this fair value gap, there was a bullish fair value gap in between here. And we can see price made a close beneath it and that confirms our main concept. And the third rule, main concept closure. Price must make a candle close above the inversion of a value gap, or in this case, beneath it. And we can see price did indeed do that. So now we are ready to take our trade entry. Then the fourth rule, which is extra confirmation. Price should not have reached internal range liquidity before making a retracement. And we can see price has not yet reached internal range liquidity before we made the retracement. So if we wanted to make a trade entry based on this inversion value gap, we would enter when price creates a retracement or when price makes it close beneath it. And then the fifth rule, stop loss placement. We want to put our stop loss at a level where the inversion value gap would be disrespected or exit the trade when price closes at the inversion value gap. And we can see right here, a solid stop loss placement would be above this high, as this high would validate that the idea of the inversion for value gap is no longer valid. The last rule, which I also mentioned in the first step, is the take profit level. 
and that's where we want to take profit at internal range liquidity and so we can maybe see a reversal. And in this case, this Fibonacci gap would be considered as internal range liquidity, but if we were to take profit at this Fibonacci gap, it would only make a 1.2 risk reward ratio, which is a terrible risk reward ratio. So instead, we could move our stop loss to break even when price reaches the internal range liquidity and then target sell side liquidity all the way down here, which would make a way better risk reward ratio. And we can see that price reached the sell side liquidity. So this was an example of a strategy which followed the recipe of the three steps. So we have finally built our trading strategy, but how do we use it? Well, don't make the mistake and go trade it live right now, as that is probably not going to work. So instead we want to test it, but how do we do that? Luckily I have two ways, and both are totally free. The first way is by going on the charts and go a long way back in time, around 3 to 4 months. And then you want to go on the time frame which you are mainly trading on. And once you have done that, go over to the kill zone which you like the most. And just start imagining your life trading. It will look something like this on the charts. Right here we have gone back around one month in price action and we are at the New York AM kill zone. So you just want to imagine that you are trading. And what I mean by that is let's say that we find our trading strategy right here. Then you want to put a realistic stop loss and then a realistic take profit which follows all your rules. So let's just say that this trade is a 1 to 2 risk reward ratio and it works perfectly. But you don't only want to count the winners, you also want to count the losers. For example, let's say this trade entry right here. We had our take profit at the state low and the stop loss at this high. And we can see that price did indeed reach our stop loss. And we just want to take a lot of these trade entries, journal them down and see what your win rate percentage is. And if it's more than 50%, you have a really good strategy. But you do have to remember, it's going to take a very long time before you can see the true win rate of your trading strategy. It's not going to work by just journaling 5 to 10 trades, we're talking 50 to 100 trades. Now I just want to show you one last example on how it could look like when you are paper trading. So at the moment it is Sunday so the markets aren't open. So let's just imagine that this is live price action and that we have this inversion for the gap right here which follows our brand new trading strategy. Then we're going to put our stop loss where we think price would disrespect this inversion for the gap and then target internal range liquidity or sell side liquidity all the way down here. Then we're going to sell when price makes the retracement up into this inversion for Valdi gap. And then we're going to put our stop loss right out here where we think price is going to invalidate this inversion for Valdi gap and then take profit all the way down at the sell side liquidity. And we can see right here, price makes one last retracement before reaching internal range liquidity and sell side liquidity. Thank you so much guys for watching, but this trading strategy is not going to work if you don't know when to trade it. So you can watch my video about when to trade right here.